to it. But then when he died, because his apprentices and the uh, Sith under him thought he was freaking insane, which he kind of said, oops, hit my mic a little bit, sorry. Which, for all intents and purposes, from what we know about him, it sounds like he was actually insane and just kind of crazy. That's redundant. He's crazy and insane, okay? Um, but after he fell, the new Sith Wars and the new Sith, the new Sith Empire, first of all, didn't really last very long. Because the New Sith Wars was a thousand year series of conflicts like the old Sith Wars were, but the old Sith Wars were like several really big galactic conflicts. The New Sith Wars are known to be a series of sometimes small, sometimes lo- um, large conflicts involving the Jedi and the Republic versus, versus a bunch of Sith offsets and subsects and empires and fiefdoms and dominions that just kept cropping up and cropping up and cropping up out of the old New Sith Empire out of the foundations built by Ruin but they completely fell apart because there was no no like council there was no clear ascension to keep the Empire together so it fell apart and so you got things like uh, the Dark Underlord you got things like Riven um, characters who I may talk about later um, you got the two Sith brothers from the Knight Errant book slash comic. I forgot what their names are, but the Diamondate. I forgot. Basically, one thought they were like some sort of dark side god incarnation of death, and the other one like the incarnation of life. It was weird. Um, and then you get to Lord Khan after all this shit all this stuff happens where the Sith have stagnated themselves with all this infighting once again and the Jedi and the Jedi and the Republic are on the edge of collapse because of a thousand years of this bullshit and you get to Khan and he finally has enough charisma and strength to pull the Sith together as once more a singular fighting force but he doesn't really build a Sith Order, he built a Dark Jedi Order and calls it a Sith Order, and that's why Bane is a pivotal figure, because he wipes the slate clean of all this bullshit. All this bullshit that's been culminating since Exar Kun, where Exar Kun built his empire, short-lived as it was, off of the old foundations, the remnants of Naga Sadao, the original, the Golden Age Sith Empire. Well, not the original, the Golden Age Sith Empire, because the original is it's completely different. Um, but then you get Revan's Empire, which was a more clear, more concise, uh, powerful empire, and then Malak kind of degenerated a little bit, but he was still Sith. He was still, you know, he still kept it Sith for as much as he wanted to. Then you get the Triumvirate. The Triumvirate was not an empire. It was Sith at the core, which was, okay, destroy the light, destroy the Jedi, unless you're Treya, in which your life's goal is to kill the Force. But that didn't last because they got wiped out by the Exile. And then you have, you know, the Resurgent Empire under Vitiate. But that was also a bastardized version of the Sith Empire because, as if we're going to believe Valkorovich, he never cared about the Sith Empire. He built it up. He made it this powerful fighting force. It was on the edge of victory. And according to Revan, he would have actually conquered the entire Republic if Revan had not been inside his mind and helped him decide to accept the treaty, uh, the treaty of Coruscant. Yeah, uh, whatever. Or, you know, the treaty, just whatever, that stopped the war. Which doesn't make a lot of sense, because goddammit, Valkorion doesn't make any fucking sense. But he bastardized his own empire, because there was no... There was no ascension, there was no lineage of people to take over that empire when he just decided to give the, that empire the finger and let it kill itself. And so the Sith started to basically cannibalize itself because of all the bullshit and after that it almost ruined itself we don't know how the story is going to end with Knights of the Old, or, I mean, the Old Republic obviously but at some point Valkorion has to die 
the Empire has to completely collapse, and there's nothing but Sith remnants spread across the galaxy for Ruin to pick up the pieces of centuries later. And then he forms a concise Empire again. It gets cannibalized by his apprentices, and it falls to shit, and you get these fiefdoms, weird Sith kingdoms, these dominions, these weird cultish leaders. Um people like the Dark Underlord who are kind of there only to kill Jedi. They don't have an empire. They don't have like a real hierarchy. They're just like, hey, I'm here. I'm going to kill Jedi. That's my only purpose. They're like the Darth Scion of his time. Um, but you see what I'm trying to say here is that the, the Sith have been basically self-destroying, self-fulfilling prophecies for several centuries now. And then Bane comes along and says, okay, enough with all the Empire bullshit, enough with all the trying to attack the Jedi and the Republic head-on with all this crap. Start from scratch. Two people. That's it. One master, one apprentice, one to have the power, one to crave it. Very simple premise. Built upon ideals Revan set in place, obviously, but, you know. Um... And from there, we get to Plagueis, we get to Palpatine, we get Maul, Tyrannus, blah blah blah, we get to Vader, and essentially Darth Bane's legacy dies with Darth Vader. And I'm not trying to say it's not, that his legacy is important, the rule of two is the most has been the most effective Sith philosophy out there, although... I would argue that uh, that if there was a Sith philosophy that took a more lenient stance on just people in general, there could be a Sith. There could be a Sith order that wasn't as welcoming as the Brotherhood of Darkness, but it wasn't as stingy and just murder you because you suck and nobody likes you as like Darth Vitiate's fucking empire. But I'm not going to get into that. Um, but it is the most concise, most well thought out, most well executed Sith Order there ever was. Because there are very, there's only a couple Sith Orders. I mean, yeah, you got the Brotherhood of the Sith. Not a lot is known about it. I can't say much about it. I mean, yeah, I like Exar Kuh and he's my favorite Sith Lord, but I can't really sit here and praise his Sith Order because not a lot is known about it. There's a Sith Triumvirate, which I would argue is an order. It's just a really fucked up order. Because it's got three leaders. None of which communicate with one another very well. One's kind of like a lord who's leading a semi... A quasi-empire. Not really, because it's just like a roaming fleet. One's leading a league of assassins. And the other one's just waiting for them all to kill each other so she can take over their academy. And then kill the Force. You got... The original Sith Order, which is continued into the Resurgent Empire, which is based on kind of feudal ideals of lords, masters, apprentices, warriors, knights, stuff like that. Um, you get Khan's Bastardized Order, Brotherhood of Darkness, which is a bastardized order. I don't even, I don't even have to say it again. The Rule of Two... And then you get the rule of one, and the rule of one is such horse shit. I mean... Okay. If you think the rule of one is an interesting premise, it's because it is, but it's horse shit. The rule of one... There's only one... There's only one... There's the rule of one because the rule of one states that the Sith Order is the only thing that matters. But... Darth Crate bastardized the order itself because he kind of he well he bastardized it like Khan did but in a different way because Crate took the Sith and he made them wholly and utterly dependent on his survival. That order first of all it did cannibalize itself and before the Legends canon was destroyed by Disney one guy, Darth Red, basically led to the entire extinction of the Order because of wonky bullshit that I'm not even going to get into today. But that Order fell completely apart because 
it was dependent on Crate. It relied on Crate. Crate was the cult of personality. He was so utterly important to that Sith Order's continuation that most of the Sith didn't know what the fuck to do once he died. That they that they were just like lost. If you were a Sith in the ancient times and the Emperor died and you all knew the Emperor died, it was like, alright, now it's time to play the game of power and taking power and gaining power and exploiting the weak and taking my positions. Not, what the fuck do I do? Holy shit, the guy, the leader's dead. You know, you're not supposed to be that way as a Sith. And the rule of one was basically just Darth Crate going, Yeah, you're all Sith, blah, blah, but it's it's really me, guys. Like, I'm not going to say it's me, but it's me. You know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm important here. You're kind of important. You know, I'll, I'll give you a fancy title, but really, it, it doesn't matter who you are. And if you hear noise in the background, the sprinklers just turn on outside, and I apologize. Um... So, the rule of two is really the only foundational Sith philosophy that actually works. I mean, Pal you Palpatine bastardized it too. I'm not going to sit here and act like it doesn't lead to... It doesn't have its own problems because it has had several problems where Sith lords end up taking more than one apprentice because they're... they're, they're their excuse is, oh, it's kind of Bane's excuse of my apprentice isn't ready, or I need to live longer because I need to actually make sure that the Sith Order continues, even though that's bullshit and I really just want to live forever. Or I'm going to have two apprentices because I want to see which one is better, but really when they meet each other, they're going to kill both of them. They're going to kill each other, or they're going to kill me. Or one gets killed, and one dies, and I'm left with nothing. And it has a lot of room where shit can happen and go wrong that wasn't intended to be a problem of the rule of two but that's the problem with the sith in general they're just greedy selfish assholes and trusting them to keep the foundations of this order and platform set up by bane is very wishful thinking i mean zana is like probably the closest one you can get to actually wanting to keep the rule of two intact because she she was going to kill Bane because she thought that he broke his own foundational concept of the rule of two, which he kind of did. I'm just being fair here. And she continued it, obviously. Cognis took over from her. We're not sure how she died, but obviously she had to kill Zana. We had Darth Millennial, which... I'm not even going to get into that fucking god-awful fucking character. <laughs> And he went off and he formed his own goddamn Sith Order, which got turned into something else. Um, but Cognus obviously had to get another apprentice or something to keep the the Sith Order rolling. We get all the way down into uh, Plagueis. But Plagueis himself bastardized the Order because he had Palpatine. He knew Palpatine already had an apprentice with Maul and he was okay with it. And I don't know if it was Plagueis or Palpatine, but one of them th said in one of the books, Plagueis or otherwise, one of the uh, extra materials, that basically the rule of two was like defunct. They didn't need it anymore. And right there it shows that, that that's the biggest problem with the rule of two. At any point, one of the heirs of the rule of two could just at some point go, we don't need it anymore. Yeah, I, I'm just deciding that it's good enough. And that's what Palpatine did, because he killed Plagueis, which was, like, the last true rule of two, like, death, really. And Palpatine Sidious, he basically builds the Empire, the Galactic Empire, and he becomes the Dark Lord of the Sith, and it's kind of known. I mean, he doesn't always go and go, my name is Darth Sidious. But he thinks of himself as being such a, like, the epitome of what the rule of two was meant to Achieved that he's like, well, rule of two doesn't matter anymore. I'm gonna have all these Sith Inquisitors, or not Sith Inquisitors, but I'm gonna have all these Inquisitors who know how to use the Force, who use the dark side. I'm gonna have these hands who use the Force, who use the dark side. I'm gonna have my one apprentice who I'm gonna say can take over from me, but he really can't. Oh, and he's gonna have a bunch of apprentices and a bunch of um, dark side assassins 
who don't fit within a Sith hierarchy under the rule too. And basically the Galactic Empire becomes a bastardized Sith Empire with all these small little um, positions and uh, government authorities within the Galactic Empire that act as bastardized versions of Sith orders created in the old empires. The Inquisitorius is just a new Sith Inquisitor uh, position. It's just, an, it's just a new branch of Sith Inquisitors. They're just not called Sith. They're just called Inquisitors. But they all use lightsabers. Most of them are red. And they all know how to use a dark side of the Force. They're Sith Inquisitors just without the Sith in the title. The Hands... The hands, like Mara Jade, again, not very powerful in the Force, but they can use it, and they use lightsabers, and they act as hands for the Emperor, who is a Sith. So they are essentially hands of the Emperor, hands of the Sith. They're Sith. They're Sith. They're not Sith in name only. <laughs> um, and then you got Vader, who's had several apprentices. Some are non-canon within Legends, even. But then you got, like, you know, Star Killer who Palpatine knew about all along, whatever. Um, or, you know, people like, um, what was his name? Uh, the guy from the weird Outer Rim world. Uh, I'm forgetting his name. Whatever, Vader had like two or three other apprentices that he had at one point. Um... I know one of them for a fact is now considered non-canon because it was just kind of like a short story created that was never meant to be canon, but whatever. Um, oh, and then he had Lumia. And then Lumia kind of continued the rule of two, but it didn't really work out well because Vergery and Cadis and Cadis. Cadis? Cadis? Oh, yeah, that's how you're supposed to say his name, Cadis. Cadis? I say Cadis, whatever. Cadis, again, kind of really didn't work the rule of two the way it was supposed to be. You know, the thing with Lumia is that, she, again, she had this, like, weird idea that as a Sith Lord, you had to make some sort of sacrifice to become a Sith, where... I don't know where that came from, because she was basically telling Jason Solo, no, you have to kill somebody, or get rid of something you love dearly and care about for you to become a full-fledged Sith. That's total horse shit. You don't have to do that. Know the dark side. Understand the concepts of the Sith. Understand, and you know what? This, this is the very... Here's the thing that I hate about all the Sith Orders. If you get the very core of the Sith Code, which is the foundation for Darth Bane's Rule of Two and for all the Sith Orders, the Sith Code basically tells you once you have the power, the strength, and you come to victory and understanding within the Force, you do whatever the fuck you want. That's even, like, brought up in SWOTOR. If you play as a light side Sith Inquisitor, and you go back and talk to your master, Darth Zash, before you have the the fight where she turns into the Dashad, or she goes into the Dashad, and if you're light side throughout the entire game and you go up to her, she's like, What did you get what did, what did you gain from being light and helping these people and being helpful and not killing people or doing what needed to be done to gain more power? Your character essentially says, The Sith Code gives me the right to make choices at my discretion, and I can build up my power base however I feel like doing it. And your master's just kind of like, yeah, that is within your purview, but the path to more power is not easily gained by being helpful and basically light all the time. And she's just like, well, whatever, it doesn't really matter because we're going to start this whole wonky bullshit. But that's that's just like, that's the, the clearest and most honest in interpretation of the Sith Code. You're allowed to be whatever the fuck you want to be. You don't need to make a, make a blood sacrifice to become a Sith. And I think that kind of concept gets lost in a lot of ideals amongst the Sith. Darth Bane's Rule of Two, not so much, but, you know, there seems to be kind of a a bit of a disconnect 
considering Palpatine and the murdering of his family and all that stuff. But anyway, this has gone on way too long. And I've kind of went off on a just general Sith ramble there for like the last, what, ten minutes or something. Darth Bane is fundamentally the most important Sith Lord in Legends canon. He's not even really important in canon canon. Not until they flesh out his character or they just adopt the, the Darth Bane books, which they're not going to because they've already said that that new look for him that they have in the in the the show Clone Wars is how he looked. They've said that it wipes out how he looked in the old canon. So there you go, canon fans. That's your Darth Bane, the Fire Nation knockoff. I'm hope you're proud of Disney's Disney Star Wars. <sighs> I yes, I know that came out before Disney owned it, but fuck you, it's Disney Star Wars. Um, he is fundamentally the most important Sith Lord because without him the, the saga of Star Wars would not even exist as we know it and I mean episodes 1 through 6 the only movies I give a fuck about um, there, would no, there wouldn't be a chosen one there wouldn't be a need for a chosen one the force would not be thrown into this fucked up imbalance that has been culminating since the fucking end of the new Sith Wars and the rise of Bane and the decline of the Jedi Order and the political the politicization of the Jedi Order and the infiltration of the Sith into the very foundations of the Republic and yada 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 yes other Sith Lords are important Revan is important Exar Kun is important Darth Kraid is important Vader is important. Tyrannus is important. Ruin is important. Vitiate, Bitiate is important. But Bane is the Sithari. He is the one who broke the back of the Sith. Not like Crait did. Not like, I'm going to just say it's all about me and it's going to work. He broke the Sith because he made him stronger but he's also what eventually led to the entire downfall of his own order and the breaking of his own perfect order unless you want to count the Knights of Ren and her, oh my God, I'm not even I'm not going to get into it I said I wasn't <laughs> uh, fuck so he was a self-fulfilling prophecy in that sense where he built this order that would last over a thousand years but then also cannibalize itself because at, such, at a point you got a lord who is so powerful so smart built on all the foundations of all the Sith that came before him that he decided he wanted to throw out the rule of two and just decided he wanted to play the game his way and that's how you got Sidious that's how you got Vader although to be fair Sidious did at when he first got Vader when he first turned Anakin to the dark side that one line to Yoda that Darth Vader will become more powerful than either of us is the clearest obvious show that in his mind in a sick Sith kind of way he was thinking Vader will one day kill me but I will have led to the foundation of the most powerful Sith Lord there would have ever been just by merit of how inherently powerful Anakin Skywalker's connection to the Force was. So, he in that sense wanted to carry on the, the legacy of Bane, but then when Vader got fucked up he's like, well, that's out the window. I may as well just stay Emperor then. I don't know. Well, why not? Unless you want to count his little conversation with Starkiller, which I really... That was a dark side ending, okay? Where he's talking to Starkiller strapped to the table and going, You could have been my equal, my successor, but now... <laughs> so that doesn't really count. That was a non-canon ending anyway. Um... 
So yeah, Darth Bane. If I uh, if I had that bullshit Sith ranking system, which I say is bullshit, but it's actually kind of a thing, Bane would be like a tier five Sith Lord, like five out of five. He is just he's not only a fleshed out character, but he's an interesting character. He has an ar- a clear arc from beginning to middle to end. He is strong. He's intelligent. Cunning. But he's not obscenely overpowered to where you just want to throw your hands up and say, what's the point? Why am I fighting this guy if literally everything I do is just for nothing because he just wins over and over and over and over again no matter how many things I throw at him no matter how powerful my allies are no matter how strong I become I can't beat him and that's what Vitiot's problem is but I deeply digress once again my friends (laughs) so Darth Bane probably okay like I said at the beginning of the video one of my most favorite Sith Lords although I am loath to talk about him because I probably got a lot of things wrong I probably misremembered a couple things I'm sure people are going to tear me apart in the comment section feel free to they're called ramblings for a reason folks they're on the cuff on the fly from memory sometimes poorly from memory but that's why they're called ramblings if I wanted to make a video that is really really in depth and intricate I would have spent months actually researching, reading all this crap that quite frankly with life, my job um, other things I want to do with my life, you know hang out, enjoy my off my t- time off from working I just can't do that so and you know what, ramblings feels more real to me and my own way of doing things I have started scripting some of my videos, but those are more for comedic value, such as my comic reviews, which, yes, I do those now, but they're only for Star Wars comics. Don't, you know, hmm, whatever. Uh, So, if I got anything wrong, you're more than free to tell me in the comments, and I can either look it up and debate it with you, whether or not your, your idea is an opinion, or whether or not I actually did just get something wrong, and I'll own up to it. Um, like I said the only thing I had a problem with with the books the Darth Bane books was just like weird little things I think Kerbishan tried to throw in there where it's like the realities of the Star Wars universe like with Zana and sexuality I don't think it fit I don't think it needed to be there I think it was an attempt at being more realistic and more just like here's something that probably happens with like weird quasi James Bondy bullshit because <laughs> I mean it was kind of hey spies and rebel groups attacking uh, Republic trying to protect an old chancellor um that didn't sit well with me. Darth Bane's life being shit when he was young until he was a bit older on a Patros is a little contrived because it's like all the miners and people in the mines gang up on him just because his dad hated him. And after his dad died, a lot of them blamed him for it, even though it was quite clear that they didn't know Bane killed him with the Force, but they blamed him anyway as if they somehow just knew what so his life does feel a little contrived to be shit just because he needs to be a very gruff very angry very rageful type of character from the get go and that's a problem but I accept it because the story was executed well enough to where it makes me look past such shit like that because I mean if you try to really delve into Star Wars as a whole you could tear holes apart into it it's not about that you tell a well enough story you can look past anything that's kind of like 
obvious sci-fi wonky bullshit, so, you know, I'm not gonna get hung up on it. Oh my god, I'm reaching two hours. <laughs> Holy fuck. This is gonna take a whole day to upload. Um. Ah, shit. Well, it's a little late now to put up a disclaimer saying that there might only be a couple pictures up on this video because I'm not gonna... I don't think I can sit here for probably four hours and listen through this whole thing over again and just put picture accurate pi or scene accurate pictures up for the v whole video all the way through um so yeah I might just throw up a little sign at the beginning of the video saying there ain't gonna be a lot of pictures so you might just want to listen to this like a podcast or something um podcast yeah a one man podcast that's it um okay so, I've rambled on long enough. It's now two hours long. So, what do you all think about Darth Bane? Do you like him? Do you think he's overrated? Would you have liked to have seen more stuff done with his character? Um, which of the books was your favorite? You know, what do you think of Zana? Do you think I harped on that one point with her a little too much? Maybe I did, but it just didn't feel... It didn't feel story necessary or... It needed to be there for me. Is what I'm trying to say. I'm not. I'm not saying that I had a problem with Zana's character or her characterization or that in general. I just think that it didn't need to be in the story that was being told because it just felt like something that was thrown in to be like, uh, here, this is more realistic. Uh, accept it, and it just didn't work for me. That being said, the Bane trilogy is like some of the best reading in Star Wars, so if you want to go read some really good Star Wars, find the Bane Trilogy and I swear, if they come out with a new set of Bane books just to fit within this new canon, I... Well, I, what do I care? It's not my canon. You all can deal with the Fire Nation knockoff and whatever stupid story he has where he's the emperor of an old Sith Empire and he decides, I'm going to kill everybody and just make a rule of two because uh, it needs to work. <sighs> whatever. But, I finally delivered the Darth... The, the Darth... <laughs> uh, it's three in the morning, I'm tired. I finally delivered... The Sith Lord ramblings you guys have been asking for since basically the first Sith Lord ramblings I ever did, which was poorly done of Nagasado, which I may redo one day, but I digress. So, I hope you all enjoyed it, and I will hopefully have another video out soon, but I will not promise anything since it takes me forever to do these. So, until the next one, people, peace.